Imagine being in a room full of people and suddenly out of nowhere you get an erection. A situation no one wants to be in, right? But this was my reality, a consequence of an addiction that was taking over my life. Welcome to a conversation that many shy away from. But today, we're going to dive right in. This is a story about my journey. A journey of self-realization, of understanding the depth of a problem I wasn't even aware was a problem. It's about how I stopped watching porn. Not many are comfortable talking about this, but it's high time we break the silence. And before we delve into the nitty gritty, if you find this content helpful or interesting, do hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more of such candid conversations. Now let's dive into the reasons why I decided to stop watching porn. Number one, I get an erection in public places. You'd think it's a funny anecdote, right? But picture this, you're on a crowded train or in a business meeting, or at a family gathering. Suddenly, you find yourself aroused, for no apparent reason. Your mind, unfortunately, has been conditioned to sexualize everyday situations. It's a reality that's not only embarrassing, but also deeply disturbing. This issue goes beyond the mere physical inconvenience. It seeps into your social interactions, and before you know it, you're avoiding public places, scared of the potential embarrassment. You begin to isolate yourself, and your world starts to shrink. The constant fear of being found out, the guilt, the shame, it all starts to eat at you. It's a vicious cycle that feeds on itself, pulling you deeper into the quagmire. It was not only embarrassing, but also disturbing. I knew I had to do something about it. Number two, I started watching porn at work. It began subtly during lunch breaks in the privacy of my office. I'd convinced myself that it was harmless just a way to unwind. But soon, it morphed into something else. It started creeping into my work hours, disrupting my productivity. Deadlines started to slip, my work quality declined, and colleagues began to notice. The worst part was that I didn't even realize it was happening. One day my boss walked in on me. The shock, the embarrassment, the sheer unprofessionalism of it all hit me like a ton of bricks. I was given a warning, a second chance I didn't deserve, but it served as a wake-up call. Suddenly, I could see the impact of my actions, the damage I was inflicting on my career, my reputation and my self-respect. That was when I realized this was not just a harmless pastime, it was affecting my professional life. Number three, I lost all my relationships to porn. The harsh reality was, my addiction was driving a wedge between me and those I held dear. It began subtly, a missed dinner here, an ignored text there. Bit by bit, I was distancing myself, retreating into a world of pixelated fantasies. There's a certain kind of loneliness that comes from being lost in the throes of addiction. It's like being surrounded by people yet feeling utterly alone. I was neglecting real human connection for fleeting moments of pleasure. The emotional toll was staggering. I saw the confusion in their eyes, the hurt, these were people who cared about me, but I was too entranced by the siren call of pornography to see the damage I was causing. I was losing the people I cared about, one by one. The isolation was deafening and the regret was overwhelming. But in the midst of this despair, I found the strength to admit, I knew I had to change. Number four, I wanted sex with every woman I meet. This is a confession that isn't easy to make, but it's crucial to the story. I found myself developing an unhealthy obsession. It was as if my mind was on autopilot, constantly steering me towards sexual thoughts and desires for nearly every woman I encountered. It was a struggle, a battle within myself to maintain normal interactions with women. I was no longer seeing women as individuals with their own unique thoughts, dreams and feelings. Instead, I was viewing them through a pornographic lens reducing them to mere objects of my own sexual gratification. This distorted perspective was not only demeaning, but it also created a barrier that made genuine connection nearly impossible. The obsession was all-consuming. It was like a fog that clouded my judgment, making it difficult to focus on anything else. I found myself constantly distracted, unable to focus on the task at hand, be it work, conversation, or even just a simple stroll in the park. My mind was always elsewhere, lost in a fantasy world that was far removed from reality. 
This unhealthy obsession was not just damaging to my relationships, but also to my self-esteem. I began to question my own worth, my own identity. Was I really just a slave to my carnal desires? Was I incapable of forming meaningful connections with women? It was a dark place, and it was taking a toll on my mental health. I realized that this was not the person I wanted to be. I didn't want my interactions with women to be dictated by a script written by the porn industry. I wanted to see women for who they truly are, human beings, deserving of respect and dignity. I was objectifying women, and I hated it. This was the harsh truth I had to confront. It was a wake-up call, a stark reminder that it was time for me to regain control. I knew I had to break free from this unhealthy obsession, to reclaim my ability to form genuine, respectful relationships with women. It was a daunting task, but it was a journey I was ready to embark on. Number five, I became addicted to masturbation. The final piece of this complex puzzle was a realization that swept over me like a chilling wind. My reliance on pornography had fostered an addiction to masturbation. I was entangled in a web of compulsive behavior from which I struggled to break free. My dependence on this activity had reached a point where it was no longer about pleasure or self-exploration. It was a need, a craving that was interfering with my daily life and mental health. Every idle moment was consumed by the urge to retreat into my private world of explicit fantasies. My mind was constantly clouded with intrusive thoughts, making it difficult for me to focus on my work, my relationships, and even simple, daily tasks. And then there were the physical implications. The excessive masturbation had led to a decrease in my sexual sensitivity, making real-life sexual encounters less satisfying. It was a vicious cycle. The less satisfying my real-life experiences were, the more I turned to pornography, which in turn led to even more masturbation. This cycle was not only damaging my sexual health, but also my mental well-being. I was constantly anxious, my self-esteem was plummeting, and I was withdrawing from social interactions. I felt like I was spiraling down a rabbit hole, with no way out. Then came the moment of epiphany. I was addicted, and it was ruining my life. It wasn't easy to admit, but once I did, I knew I had to take action. I had to break free from the chains of this addiction. I decided to quit pornography, to reclaim control over my life, and to start treating my body with the respect it deserved. I was addicted and it was ruining my life. It was time for me to quit, and so I did.